working with my campus coordinator or was my campus coordinator when I was a student. And uh, I, I honestly, I like to remember myself as one of the more active advocates across the country. And I think the biggest thing that I, I noticed when I was a student was that a lot of times you see more of the bigger schools getting noticed. You see schools like NYU, schools like uh, University of Chicago, schools like UCSB, schools that are really in the headlines with anti-Semitism, anti-Israel activity 100% of the time. Or not 100%, but at least a very high percentage. So here in the Southeast and in the Southwest, we do still have anti-Israel activity and we have some amazing advocates on campus that are really leading the way and leading the charge against fighting BDS on campus and SJP, which unfortunately, I, I'm based out of West Palm Beach, Florida is where I live now, grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's definitely been an adjustment, but here in Florida, it's very different than many other places like North Carolina, like Georgia, like Louisiana, like Arizona, because my region is very large. So we have to cater what we do on campus to each student, each campus individually. So some of the big events, for some of the big events that we ran this semester, we brought a few speakers down to Florida. We brought our amazing Holocaust survivor who's been very close with us, who I actually brought to East Carolina University when I was a student, Sammy Steigman. He, when I brought him on campus, we've had about 475 students at that event. And at the events that we had here in Florida, we've had north of 50 to 75 students at each event. And it was really great to see students come out and actually meet a Holocaust survivor something that they may not actually get to do again in their lifetime. So in addition, we also brought Shai DeLuca, who came, he went to Tulane University, went to University of Miami, and he also, he went to Florida International University, which was an amazing experience for me. I actually hadn't been able to hear Shai in person, and Shai has an excellent story, really showing what it's like to be a Zionist in against the hardest odds. And a few other things that I really try to push for when I with my students is the students that are at campuses like mine when I was when I was a student, like students, students at High Point University, students at UNC Charlotte, students at universities where anti-Israel activity isn't thrown in their face every second. We're able to find different programs to engage the entire campus community with Israel. And that's something that I think is really important in pro-Israel advocacy we need to be able to connect with every student and show them why it is important to support Israel. It affects every single one of us in our daily lives. Everything that we use from the flash drive to my agricultural students in North Carolina that are studying drip irrigation that was invented in Israel. Without Israel, you would not have the successes that we have today on all fronts. And something that I've actually focused on building a presentation of my own, I actually gave this presentation to Tulane University about two weeks ago before the world came to an end. It was uh, about medical innovation and environmental technology. And I think that's something that is very important to be able to share on campus. And it connects a lot of different majors who would normally not be involved with Israel to Israel, not just the Jewish students, but Christian students, Muslim students, students from all faiths and all backgrounds. So really in regards to coronavirus, we uh, in the Southeast and Southwest, I think just about every one of my campuses are shut down. And regardless of being shut down, I'm watching across the country, especially my regions, students are, and students in the pro Israel groups are really starting to mobilize and have online activities and online events, which is just incredible. I have speakers come and speak to you live from Israel, updating on the coronavirus situation in Israel or throughout the country. It's really cool to see all of this coming together virtually. And I, I work remotely, like I said, from West Palm Beach, Florida. so. Uh, unlike Marlene, I don't go into the office every day, so I do most of my work online and watching this adjustment has been a really, it was a little, it was a little fun to watch at first, but now I'd ha I definitely have to say it's very inspiring to me because that means that we are going to continue this fight no matter, at, at all costs. And something that, um, I, I luckily most of my apartheid weeks and anti-Israel celebrations are, have been canceled, but we were discussing about how some of them are moving online, especially BDS votes. So that's something that we've been really honing in on and trying to find a good action plan if that does happen, especially at universities like Florida State University and University of South Florida or some of the other schools down here in, in Southeast. Uh, but thank you guys for uh, listening. I really appreciate all of you coming out. 
for all of our 57 attendees that we have right now. It's really nice to see you staying engaged and staying active. And I'll pass it off to Jonathan. Thanks, Ben. Um, and thanks, everyone, for sharing those really specific updates to your region. One thing about our department and the way we operate, which I think is very, very important, is that we recognize that every campus is different. Um, every student group is different too. So we recognize these like subtle dynamics, uh, even though the larger trends are the same and they've still been the same for many years, but things have become more amplified, it seems, year after year. Um, and that's why it makes it even more important for us to take such a strong and robust stance in, certain, in terms of defending students against anti-Semitism and fighting back against anti-Israel double standards and lies. But I, I really think a big advantage uh, for all of us, the way we work together as a team, is that we all recognize that advocacy really starts on a personal level. And as important as it is to have the facts on your side, and thankfully we do, thankfully, but one thing that I can just say as like a slight professional and personal anecdote is that just because we have the facts on our side doesn't mean that we always have the ability to change people's minds based on those facts, okay? People on the other side, sadly, they're not persuaded by facts, unfortunately, and that's the ignorance that we see all the time, but uh, they're not gonna be dissuaded either. So it really starts in terms of us sharing our personal stories, what Israel means to us, what does our own Jewish identity mean on a larger level, um, and how that all connects together. And I think that really just sums up the approach that we have where we infuse um, the factual and academic um, components and merge that together with a compelling personal story and it really also it starts to come down to how you as an inv individual are able to relate to others and for me that's the most important thing that's why i think our department has really uh, thrived in so many tough environments and that's why i'm really grateful to work with everyone here